The ulnar gutter splint is used to immobilize fractures of the fourth and fifth metacarpals and of the ring and little fingers. Pictured here is a fracture of the diaphysis of the fifth metacarpal, commonly referred to as a boxer's fracture. Place the patient in the sitting position with the elbow flexed to 90 degrees and the MCP, PIP, and DIP joints all flexed to 45 degrees. Use a piece of 3 or 4 inch Webrel to measure the required length of the splint. Measure from the tip of the little finger to a point 5 to 10 centimeters proximal to the elbow along the ulnar portion of the forearm. Lay this piece of Webrel on a bedside table and then roll out an additional three layers to form the cast padding. Use two pieces of Webrel to make the top layer, each offset from the previous layers, by 50%. Next, roll out six to eight layers of three or four inch plaster on top of the Webrel. The plaster may be folded back and forth upon itself during this process. Soak the plaster in room temperature water until fully saturated. Raise the plaster from the bucket and remove the excess water by allowing the layers to fold down on themselves and then gently squeezing them. Lay the plaster down onto the cast padding and smooth it over with your hands. Fold the overhanging edges of the top layer of Webrel over the plaster to form a single outer layer that will prevent the plaster from sticking to the elastic bandage. Before applying the splint, place a small piece of folded Webrel between the ring and little fingers. This serves as a padding that will prevent maceration of the digits after the splint has been applied. Apply the splint along the ulnar side of the forearm. Gently mold the plaster to the extremity using the palms of your hands. An assistant, or the patient if he is able, may be required to hold the splint in place while the elastic bandage is being readied. Use two or three inch elastic bandages to secure the splint to the patient. In this example, the elastic bandage is first wrapped along the mid portion of the splint to keep it in place. Subsequent wrapping occurs in the usual distal to proximal fashion. Note that the wrap involves the ring and little finger leaving the others free. Overlap each pass of the elastic bandage by 50%, applying a moderate amount of tension as you proceed. Once the elastic bandage has been secured, again gently mold the splint using the palms of your hands. For most applications, the wrist should be extended to 20 degrees, and the MCP, PIP, and DIP joints should be splinted in 45 degrees of flexion. For fractures involving the distal metacarpal or the metacarpal phalangeal joint, the MCP joint should be placed in 90 degrees of flexion. Finally, repeat a detailed neurovascular examination of the hand once the splint has been applied.